Hi and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host Matt and today we're going to build the best gaming system possible with an $800 budget. Our budget today doesn't include your monitor, keyboard, mouse, speakers or any software. A lot of people are going to have this left over from a previous build and that sort of stuff really does come down to personal preference. Our focus with this build is on 1080p gaming as this covers most monitors from the 24 to 27 inch range. So let's check out the hardware that we've chosen. Bang for your buck, nothing beats the latest range of fourth generation Haswell Core i3 processors. When it comes to general usage, it's almost impossible to tell between a Core i3 system to a Core i5 or even the Core i7 for the most part. This is generally true for gaming too, especially with low to mid range GPUs. Therefore we've gone with the affordable Core i3-4170 which comes clocked at 3.7 GHz and cost us 135 bucks. With a few dozen options, picking the right motherboard can be tough. Although this is an entry level system, we decided against an Intel H97 motherboard. The Z97 version cost us $20 more and you get a few extra features that can be handy down the track, such as overclocking. As standard, all Z97 motherboards should provide six USB 3 ports, gigabit ethernet, and six SATA 3 ports. The cheapest and best value Z97 motherboards come from ASRock in our opinion, and we decided on the Z97M Pro 4. This is a micro ATX motherboard and although we'll be using an ATX mid tower it is possible to opt for a smaller micro ATX case if you wish. If you want an ATX size motherboard for a few dollars less the ASRock Z97 Anniversary is also an option. The days of skating by with just 4GB of RAM are almost over so you may as well invest now in an 8GB kit. After all at just $50 the G-Skill Ripjaws X Series 8GB DDR3-2133 kit is a serious bargain and we don't see much sense in saving $20 to get a 4 gigabyte kit. We recommend a minimum memory speed of 1866 MHz with the current generation Intel Haswell processors. And ideally, you should aim for 2133 MHz or even 2400 MHz. With a budget of $800, it doesn't leave a whole lot of moolah for your GPU, which is most likely going to be your most expensive component. Gamers will most likely be limited to a sub $200 option. Thankfully that buys you a very powerful GPU right now, especially if you plan on 1080p gaming. For bang on $200, we landed the EVGA GeForce GTX 960 2GB ACX 2.0 Plus graphics card. This card features a nice dual fan cooler that keeps the GTX 960 cool and quiet. There isn't a reference design for the GTX 960 and from what we've seen all manufacturers are offering solid products so you don't necessarily have to go with EVGA. Really I'd suggest picking up the cheapest GTX 960 that you can find. For audio we're relying on the integrated Realtek ALC892 codec which is found on the motherboard. This isn't the greatest option but unless you're spending serious dollars on your headphones or speakers this is going to be fine. Right now the best value SSD is without a doubt Crucial's VX100 and since $100 gets you the 250 gigabyte model, that's what we've gone for. Personally, I find 120 gigabytes is just not enough these days, especially with the way games are growing in size. The 250 gigabyte model allows you to have all your favorite games installed as well as all the essentials. For everything else that won't fit or doesn't need to be on the snappy SSD, we've got a secondary hard drive. The Western Digital Black Series is a little pricey, but for reliability, it's excellent, and for a hard drive, the performance is pretty good. Personally, I haven't found the need for an optical drive in many years now, but if you do need one, the Samsung DVD rewrite is available for about 20 bucks. Corsair's CX series power supply units are an excellent choice for basic system builds and PC upgrades. CX series PSUs are available in a variety of power configurations and include features that are normally found only on premium power supplies. Since the Core i3 and GDX 960 combo won't draw a great deal of power and overclocking is essentially off the table, the 430W CX will be ample. However, we do only happen to have the CX750M on hand. This obviously won't affect performance at all. This is the first time I've used a deep cool product, but for just $40, the Tesseract SW really caught my attention. This ultra affordable case looks pretty good, features an eye catching window, and even comes with a pair of blue LED 120mm fans. The Tesseract SW is painted inside and out, offers plenty of room for radiators, can handle full-size 310mm long GPUs, 165mm tall CPU coolers, and 230mm long power supplies. What more could you ask for at this price? Now that we've got it all installed, let's run a few benchmarks and see how it performs. We average 24 frames per second when playing project cars with a very demanding wet weather conditions. Oh. 
while the clear conditions allow for a much smoother 50 frames per second. Witcher 3 Wild Hunt was very playable, with an average of 45 frames per second with everything turned up, with the exception of Nvidia Hairworks, which was disabled. Why? Time to wake up, master. These lessons so boring they put you to sleep too. Dying Light averaged 38 frames per second with everything turned up at 1080p. Far Cry 4 was very playable with a smooth 55 frames per second on average. Wait, wait, wait. For $800 for all the core components, this entry level gaming system will allow gamers to enjoy all the latest AAA titles at 1080p. Factor in the cost of a good quality monitor, keyboard, mouse and speakers or headphones, you'd expect the total cost of hardware to come in at about $1100 for this system. Thanks for watching our PC build, this has been Matt from Hardware Unbox, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,